My name is Michael Stevens, and I created and host the YouTube channel Vsauce. It's a really fun channel where every week I create a video where I discuss the science, the physics and chemistry and psychology behind everyday questions, especially really fun questions like, what color is a mirror? Or what are the most recent theories about deja vu and why we experience it? One of my favorite topics is outer space, space travel, the history of humans going to space and where we will go in the future. I have been learning about space and interested in space ever since I was old enough to learn things and be interested in things. In fact, when I was a teenager, I went to space camp for three summers in a row. But despite all of that, I have never seen a rocket launch. So when I got a chance to travel to French Guiana to watch the Vega rocket launch with Euronews and their knowledge channel, I was ecstatic. I said, obviously, I would love to go. Unfortunately, I still haven't seen a rocket launch because every day that I was there, the weather was too inclement for the launch to occur. But it just goes to show how cautious and how important these launches are. As soon as I arrived in French Guiana in Cayenne, the first thing that struck me was the humidity. It was intense. The air felt really, really thick and heavy, and I was sweaty. But of course, the cool thing, which I don't think about very often living in London where it's not nearly as humid, is that humid air might feel thicker and heavier, but it's actually less dense than dry air. All of that water that's inside humid air takes up space that would otherwise be occupied by heavier nitrogen and oxygen molecules. So it made me think about rockets launching in humid air and whether or not it's a little easier to launch with that humid, less dense air than it would be in dry, thicker, denser air. I'm not sure if it makes much of a difference. You could calculate the difference, but I think it would be small compared to the real reason they launch near the equator in French Guiana. This was my first question. I was like, why is the European Space Agency launching rockets in South America? Well, it turns out, of course, that launching a rocket near the equator gives you a huge boost from the fact that the Earth spins. And the closer you are to the equator, the faster that boost is. So you don't have to use nearly as much fuel. In Kourou, the environment and the nature around us was incredible. The bugs that I saw in Kourou were, well, it was like being on a nature documentary all the time. I was walking around the hotel and I found ants, giant ants, carrying leaves and sticks, like literally sticks and leaves that were five times, ten times bigger than the ants were. I grabbed a camera and shot some footage of it because I don't see that very often in London. I didn't see that very often when I lived in New York. You might be wondering where I am right now. Well, I'm actually shooting inside a hotel room in Moscow, Russia. I came here right after my trip to South America, and I'm here to talk to YouTubers about making content for Russian audiences and how to have fun and be successful on YouTube. When you think about outer space and Russia, you might think of the Soyuz rocket. Well, in a really fun twist of symmetry, the Soyuz rocket is actively used in Kourou, French Guiana, where I just was. And one of my top three highlights from the entire trip includes going to an active launch pad where the Soyuz is prepared and launched. I didn't get to see a Soyuz rocket, but I did get to see an Ariane rocket, the biggest one that they launched there. They were preparing it, and we got to go into the facility. We had to wear hard hats and to stand next to this rocket and look at it and realize you are going to go into space in just a matter of months and I'm standing right next to your engine, right next to the nozzle where all of that thrust will come out. It was incredible. Those elements were the coolest part of the trip. I wasn't just viewing historical space locations, I was on an active spaceport where everyone around me was working in the space industry. This wasn't a book or Wikipedia or a documentary. This was the real thing. I was surrounded by people whose daily jobs involve working on putting things into outer space. All of the people I traveled with were so cool. Uh, journalists who work covering science, everything from CERN to 
launching of satellites and rockets, as well as a contest winner from Uganda, who I feel very sorry for because although he traveled all the way to French Guiana to watch the launch, he didn't get to see it. One of the neat things about being in French Guiana that I hadn't thought of until I arrived was that my family and a lot of the people that I work with on Vsauce 2 and 3 live in the United States, and so, as opposed to where I usually live in London, French Guiana was much more convenient time zone-wise. I was able to talk to my mom and my sister and all of my friends without the time difference that I usually have to deal with in London. Overall, being able to see the state of the space industry today and talk to and meet the people that are actively working in it was incredible. My only question now is, when can I go back? Because I really, really want to watch the Ariane rocket launch in July. This is a giant rocket, and I still haven't seen a launch, but I've heard that what a video camera or a still photographic camera can capture from a launch doesn't come close to what you feel when you are there in person. There are elements to a launch like infrasound, sound of a frequency too low to hear or to be picked up by a camera, but yet still in person you can feel those vibrations like a bass drum at a marching band. So I was so glad to have gone and I learned so much, not just about facts and what space travel is, but about what it's like to live a life working in the industry. I am now aware more than ever before of the reality of the space industry today. It's not just some mythical thing that happened back in the past and might happen in the future. It is something that is happening right now. The satellites that we use for GPS, for our cell phones, they use satellites that are being put up into space as we speak. The Vega rocket that I did not get to see launch, that was launched unfortunately the day after I got back to London, was putting two, uh, three satellites up, one of which was really exciting from Estonia that was going to be testing a special type of solar sail, and the other two were extremely vital. One is looking at the health of vegetation on Earth, and the other is going to help us predict natural disasters. So becoming aware and helping more people on Earth become aware of just how important and helpful these technologies are and how the space industry is pushing the boundaries of technology is, I think, important to us moving forward with the exploration of places beyond Earth.